Hi everyone, in this video I want to go over a book on real analysis. The book is called Introduction to Real Analysis and it's written by Bartle and Sherbert. This is an interesting book because I actually read this book years ago and I only actually came to own it a few months ago. You see, I thought this book was awesome when I was an undergrad. I used it to help me study when I was taking advanced calculus. Then I forgot the name of the book and it wasn't until someone left a comment that I thought, oh, wait a minute, that was that book that I liked so much as an undergrad. Yes, it's the Bartle and Sherbert book. Let's take a look inside this awesome Introduction book. to Real Analysis by Bartle and Sherbert, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. That's a really, really good school. 1982, that was a long time ago. So this must be uh, an older edition of the book. So this is the table of contents. And one of the things that makes this book different from several other books is that it treats real analysis in one variable. So it's only single variable analysis. So it starts with some set theory, then it goes on to the real numbers, and then it talks about sequences. So this is a very typical order. So if you take a real analysis class, this book will probably follow like the same order that you're following in your class. So it'll probably help you in your class and then limits and continuity. Then we have some more stuff here on continuity, compact sets, differentiation, the Riemann integral, and then it finishes with sequences of functions and infinite series. And we have some references, hints, and an index. So it's all analysis in one variable, which is not really great, but it's also good. I think the authors did this on purpose in order to make it like more readable, right? So you just focus on one variable in this book. This is the section on functions. And the examples are pretty well laid out. Um, the author does a good job of explaining everything in a nice, clear fashion. Um, I think it's pretty good in terms of readability. These are the exercises for section 2.4, which is on the completeness property of the real numbers. And they're pretty good. Like, they're not too difficult and they're not too hard. There's a good variety, I guess, is what I'm saying. So you see some of them are circled. I have not done those. Those are just circled. This is a used book, and you see there's tons of problems. I mean, it's just ridiculous how many problems. Wow, look at that. It keeps going, it keeps going, more and more and more. So 26 problems, that is a lot. Let's look in the back of the book to see how many actually have answers. Okay, this is the back of the book, so 2.4. We see that some of the answers seem to be like partial proofs or some pretty big hints. Let me turn the page because I think there are more. Yep, there are more there. So you see the authors do do a good job of trying to help out when they can. Unfortunately, there are not answers for every problem, but that's pretty much unheard of, right? <laughs> An analysis book that has answers to every problem. It's just not going to happen, or it's very, very unlikely. This is chapter six on the Riemann integral. This is a pretty good chapter. I have read portions of this many, many years ago uh, when I was taking advanced calculus. We used the book by Fitzpatrick. And I felt that the explanations in this book were a little bit more clear for me at the time. Now, looking back, um, I really like the Fitz, Fitzpatrick book, and I think it's a great book. And I'm not sure I can say this one is better. I kind of put them as, as equals. But at the time, I do remember thinking that this book was the best book in the world. So if you are taking real analysis or you are thinking of learning real analysis, I think this is a pretty good choice for a book. Here the authors prove what they call the uniform continuity theorem. Let i be a closed bounded interval and let f from i into the real numbers be continuous on i. Then f is uniformly continuous on i. So every continuous function on a closed and bounded interval is also uniformly continuous. And the authors prove it here and they give a very, very nice proof. That's what I think I liked about this book um, that made it so special to me when I was taking advanced calculus is that the clarity in this book is really good. It was really good for me as a beginner at the time. So how does this book feel in your hands? So it's not a very thick book, but it's a little bit thick. It's just like a little thick and it's the right size. It's got the gold cover, you know, the gold letters. Um, really, really nice book, um, really good quality. I am not sure uh, if the newer editions uh, are the same color or if they look the same. And the pages feel okay. I wouldn't say um, they're superb quality, but it's not like really bad quality either. So just your average uh, quality. This is the chapter on infinite series. And so if you've had Calculus 2, 
this is kind of like a breath of fresh air. Here we have the test for convergence. So you see you have, you know, the comparison test, the limit comparison test, which is really nice. Uh, a lot of analysis books don't include the limit comparison test. For example, I believe the book by Buck does not include the limit comparison test because I remember uh, trying to do a problem and trying to use it and I couldn't. So it's nice that it's included in this book. Then we have the root and ratio test. We also include the integral test. And I believe there's the alternating series test as well. Yep, there it is, alternating series test. And I think that's it. And plenty of exercises. Look at all of those problems. Again, the authors do a really good job of giving the reader lots of opportunity to practice what you've learned. Another really great thing about this book is that it actually lays flat. So you see I have it laid flat here on the table, and so you can take a piece of paper and you can actually work from it. Um, that's what I don't like about soft covers. A lot of times, um, a lot of like the smaller soft cover books, um, when you lay them flat, they just, they close. But this one, it's the right size and it lays flat. Here the authors actually talk about Newton's method. So if you've had Calculus 1, then you've probably seen Newton's method. So it's pretty cool that they decided to include it in their book here. Um, they go through, you know, the derivation, they give some information here on the method, and then they give you a picture. This is the picture that I would typically draw in my calculus class when explaining Newton's method. So really, really nice technique, really nice um, application of calculus. So really, really nice stuff. Here's some pictures which are included, which is nice. You see you have the lower sums, and you can see that the lower sums are an under approximation for the area under a curve. Then over here on the next page, we have the upper sum, and we see that the areas of the rectangles from the upper sum are an over approximation of the area under a curve. So really nice pictures to help explain you know, what's going on. And if you've had Calculus 1, you've probably seen these pictures in your book. So it's nice that you see all of those Calc 1 topics in here again. I mean, it even talks about L'Hopital's rule, which is something that most Calc students have seen. So you see that familiar familiarity again in this book. And that could be a reason, you know, why the authors decided not to include, you know, the multi-dimensional stuff. Because they thought, okay, if someone's had Calc 1 and 2 and maybe a little bit of Calc 3, they're more familiar, you know, with the Calc 1 and Calc 2 stuff. So let's focus on analysis for one variable and then later on in another course treat it you know, in more than one variable. Whether that's a good idea or not, I think is a matter of opinion, but I think the authors do a really good job with a one variable treatment. So what is the con of this book? Well, I think the biggest con is that it doesn't have you know, multivariable analysis. At the same time, you can't really say it's a con. Just because the book doesn't have it doesn't make it a bad book, right? This is still a pretty good analysis book but it's still an analysis book. So it's still gonna take a lot of work to read and work through. Um, you know, real analysis is a hard subject. So I think this is a book that is good for anyone who wants to learn analysis and needs another resource. Honestly, I think anyone who's trying to learn analysis should have as many resources and as many books as possible. And I think this one's a pretty good choice. Again, it's Introduction to Real Analysis, and this is the book by Bartle and Sherbert. Good luck.